How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you some of my favorite tricks for creating dynamic, animated, and looping lighting effects and having some fun with that and a couple post-processing effects as well. Um, so we'll get into that right after this shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so let's set up a scene for the light to actually react to. So I'm gonna hit, gonna plan them at S8, and then apply that scale, not that it really matters. And then for an object as well as sort of a focal point, I'm going to uh, just get a torus and shade smooth, and then just flip it. I hit RX 90 to flip it exactly where I wanted it to be. So this is it, this is our torus. And there we go, we have something pretty cool. Um, now the project file that you saw at the beginning of this tutorial, um, you can grab that on Patreon if you want, if you wanna see kind of how I looped that whole thing in geometry notes, but today I'm just teaching the lighting. So. I'm gonna show you two tricks that I've been using quite a bit lately. So the first one is we are going to get an area light. So let's go ahead and just um, get a light, area light. And then I'm gonna hit G and just kind of move it over here. I'm going to scale it up. And then I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. So hopefully it's pointing where I want it to go. So we'll go, let's hit it out here. So hitting G and then hitting R twice to rotate. So this is a really, really cool trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to shading and play with some nodes to really manipulate this uh, light. Let's see if we get this window to close here. So this is a cycles thing. This is not an EV thing. You can't use EV for this trick, unfortunately. So what we'll do is in the shader editor, we're just gonna click use nodes and now you can play with your light uh, within nodes and having some fun with it there. But what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna get a classic uh, color ramp and we're gonna get a noise texture. So get that, I'm gonna hit Control T, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default. I'm gonna hit Control T and then we're gonna use an object coordinate and then we're gonna get a factor. So what we're gonna do now is kind of crunch this in to get some effects here, but nothing is really happening. So what we need to do is click on the area, go to our area light settings and get that spread to come down. And what that's going to do now is allow us to kind of goof with that noise texture. Of course, I forgot to plug it into the color. There we go. So that's really important right there. Look at this, we already have something pretty cool going on. And then you can go ahead and bring your size up and then bring up the scale of your noise texture as well to get some fun stuff going. And um, one thing we need to do is in the object, settings, click on the uh, area light, and that's really gonna set our coordinates up correctly. So it's using the position of itself to set up correct coordinates. So that's really important there. So now we have this whole shenanigans going on. And what we'll do is we'll just give it kind of an orange, I mean, kind of a yellow to emulate the sun, but only slightly. And then in our world settings, we'll go ahead and bring this all the way up to be bright make it lightly blue, and then we'll bring that lightness down a little bit. So now we've kind of emulated the sun, um, but just a little bit, not too much. Um, but this is how, we do, how we're doing this here. It's really fun. And if you go here to 4D, you can animate this. Now, I have done a tutorial like this once before, but we didn't loop it, and I'm gonna show you a really cool trick after it to really make your lighting stand out. So what I'm gonna do here in the area light settings, is just make this fill out the whole scene. So we'll click on the area light and bring my size up. But the bigger the size, the uh, brighter the strength. So we're gonna bring up the power of our area light. You need, you'll need to bring that up. And then we'll just have our world settings kind of match what's going on here so that it kind of looks like 
there's some blue sky happening. Perhaps this is a little bit too blue. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So there we go. Now we have this. Now this was really quickly done. If you want this to be like true to world colors, I would go in and try to do some color picking to get exactly like sun color, sky color. Um, this was just very quickly to show you the concept. So like I said, the W is going to animate your lights. So we'll bring that W to zero. Now I this is a looping texture trick I showed a couple tutorials ago, but this is applicable in any spot where you're using the 4D noise texture or 4D in any texture. This is how you loop them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this little thing right here to bring up a new window. I'm gonna click this and we're gonna get a timeline. Now, very important, go to your preferences and make sure that in the animation tab, you are at linear interpolation. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll plug this vector into the vector here and we're gonna get a mix RGB. So shift A, search mix RGB, and we'll plug these two together. So let's bring this factor over to zero and then I'm gonna hover over this spot right here. Well, first off, hit the back arrow to go to frame zero, super important. So let's hit I to add a keyframe, go to the very end and just slide it over to one, hit I again. Now let's go back to frame one. Now what we're gonna do here on these two textures is use, um, you know, make sure your scales, everything is the same, otherwise it won't loop. We're gonna use the W to animate it and with the settings that we're about to apply, it will it will cause this noise texture where it starts. This, is, this one is going to end where this one starts. That's pretty much it, because it's kind of confusing, but as long as you know, this is 100% gonna loop your texture. So I'm gonna use a W of one as how fast my, so the W is gonna go from zero to one, that's how fast it's going to go. Um, if you want to go faster, add more. If you wanna go slower, do like 0.5, anything like that. So let's go ahead and right out here, the W hover and hit I, we'll go to the end and I'm gonna click one, add a keyframe. Now on this noise texture here, stay where you're at, and we're gonna go here, start at zero. So at frame 250, we're gonna start at, hit I on zero, go to the end and hit the back arrow to go to frame zero and type negative one, enter. And then um, we'll go ahead and hit I to initiate that um, animation. So those are your settings. So if you want it to be faster, instead of using positive one and negative one, you would use like positive five, negative five to make your W go faster. So now if we press play here, we have, in animating very nicely subtle um, animating piece here. And we bring that strength up. Now, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to make your lighting look really cool. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a camera because we are gonna need to render this. So let's go ahead and get a camera and I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero. And then just for me, I'm gonna make it orthographic and then hit G and then orthographic scale it in so we get a nice view of the torus. So let's go ahead and add a plastic texture to it. So here, um, I'm just gonna go to the material preview. So I'm gonna click new and then um, bring your roughness all the way down base color to something like this. We want it to be nice and reflective because I'm a big fan of that. So now we have this. What I'm gonna do now is bring up the strength of my light considerably, like quite a bit. And I'm focusing on how bright this object is. So what we're gonna do now is go here to the camera view and first off, for your light path settings, just to make your render go faster, this is what I'm using right here. And then now we're gonna play with this. Watch what happens on direct light when I click this over. Boom, everything is gone. All the light is gone on this plane, but this object is still as uh, brightly lit as it was. So what's really cool is if you bring this in you can make this guy brighter than this, even though the same light is affecting them. And you can really make sure that your object is the focal point of your animation while the lights behind it aren't overtaking it. So you can really have control over that. And then if I go ahead and render this, you'll notice this object is still the brightest focal point. And then we can, of course, bring that, in, uh, that direct light down. However, now this isn't realistic by any means. This is really just you being able to control the artistic state of your scene. So there we go. Now you can see this object is brighter and you can really go crazy with it. Of course, after a while, it's not gonna look that good because it looks like that. But 
you are getting better reflections in a sense, but they're just brighter reflections than what's happening behind it. And you're having a good time with it. So now that we have that, you can hit the render button. Now there's no textures on the ground floor. That's why it looks kind of ugly. It's not a very perfect scene. If you look at my scene, I pretty much did the same settings. So if you look at this, the thumbnail scene here, you can see how these reflections are incredibly bright and the floor plane is a little bit darker. And that's because I was able to control that reflection. So it really just kind of takes some tweaking with you know your texture and your materials. And by the way, those are real-time material materials if you're curious about those. Um, but yeah, playing with your material, playing with your light and uh, kind of tweaking the direct lighting of your scene can really give you a really nice, powerful image. Um, so that's one little hacky trick. It's definitely hacky. It's not realistic. Some people might get mad at you for doing it, but do what works for you. This technique really worked for me to make a really compelling, really interesting scene. Um, so yeah, those are my two tricks. You can render it out and have this nice looping animated lighting with your, uh, area light. So that is how you do that. Thank you guys for watching. And again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description and I'll see you in the next tutorial.